How many of you know the story of Jacob in the Bible? So tonight I'm going to take you on a journey with Jacob. And where we're at with Jacob in this journey is that he's heading back to see his brother that he hasn't seen in 20 years. Jacob means deceiver, and he's been a deceiver all these years, and he's headed back to meet his brother. For those of you that don't know, I'm going to give you a little backstory. Jacob and Esau, they are twins. And Jacob and Esau, the Bible says that they even fought it out in the womb to see who would be born first. They were fighting before they were even born. The Bible says that Esau was born first, but Jacob was fighting so bad that he was born and Jacob was holding the heel of Esau trying to be first. And they named him Jacob. Jacob means heel grabber, which is translated into deceiver or trickster. And that's exactly what Jacob was his entire life. When he grew up, he just competed with his brother Esau in everything. Esau and Jacob. Now Esau was a man's man. How many man's men do we have in this place? You just love the outdoors. This guy had hair on his chest and arms. I think he had a little bit on his forehead. I mean, this guy was a man's man. His dad loved him. So he was a daddy's boy. Esau, daddy's boy. But Jacob, mama's boy. He wasn't out there. We got a couple mama's boys down here. He wasn't out there doing everything. No, his mama was teaching him how to deceive just the same way that she did. And they deceived his father into the blessing. Esau had the blessing, and Jacob deceived his way into getting the blessing. Now, Esau was ticked off. And when this happened, Jacob ran for his life. Now, for 20 years, Jacob was on the run. Now, Esau wasn't chasing after him so to speak, but the last time that Esau saw Jacob, Esau wanted to kill Jacob. So for 20 years, he was gone, and Jacob met his match. He ran into another deceiver. I want to tell you this. If you're a deceiver, you're going to run around and find yourself in the midst of another deceiver, and that's what he did. Laban deceived him because Jacob absolutely loved Rachel. He was in love with her, but Laban deceived him into marrying his older daughter, and then Rachel. But long story short, he finally deceives Laban and gets all his money, all his possessions, and he's going to make a life for himself. And now it's 20 years later, he's on the journey to go back to meet his brother Esau. And it's in the midst of this journey that he finds a fight night. Everyone say fight night. And this fight night, it really shows us everything leading up to it. There's a lot of water under the bridge. How many of you would say that's a pretty long story? That's a lot of stuff that happened. I mean, there was crazy stuff that happened. A lot of water under the bridge. And some of you have a lot of water under the bridge. Years of mistakes, years of regrets, years of wrong decisions, which have turned into unbreakable habits. You can read this part of the story for yourself, but Jacob... He's a fighter, so he fights for the wrong things, and Jacob fights the wrong way. Fights for the wrong things and fights the wrong way. So he's on his way to meet Esau, and he comes up with a plan. Jacob's a fighter. So his plan is this. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my brother some gifts. Maybe he'll forgive me if I give him a bunch of gifts. And then his plan is this. He was going to put his family in three different groups. So when he got there... If this part of his family was attacked, maybe this part could run and flee. What was he doing? He was a fighter, fighting the wrong way, fighting for the wrong things. But here's what I want to tell you is some of the things that he was fighting for were not wrong. So what was he fighting for? He was fighting for an inheritance. That's not a bad thing. He was fighting to get the woman that he wanted. He fought to get his independence, his freedom. He fought to have his own piece of the pie. He fought to have his own identity. He was mama's boy, Jacob, and he felt like he deserved to have the blessing, and he would do anything he could to get what he thought he deserved. So what's our problem tonight? So the problem is this, that a lot of us in this place, we're fighting for things that aren't wrong. 
You're fighting for that inheritance that God has promised you. You're fighting for the woman of your dreams. You're fighting for God to give you relationships. You're fighting for God to give you favor in the workplace. And there's nothing wrong with that. All of these are the kinds of dreams and goals that people receive from God. They know in their hearts that God has greatness for them, but they fight the way Jacob fought, and they wind up with regrets, looking over their shoulder, saying, man, I've got a lot coming to me in the wrong ways, like he's going to meet Esau. You feel like life is catching up with you. But tonight, through this fight night, you have a ringside seat to one of the greatest fights ever fought. And through this, it gives us a pattern how to fight God's way, and for what God wants to give us. How many of you want the blessings? Come on, one more time. You want the promises of God. So in this fight night, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to preach the whole passage to you. I don't have three shiny points, but as I preach it, I believe that you're going to find something through it. And as you listen, you might find something that speaks to you. You might say, I need to save my marriage. Well, listen tonight and learn how to fight the right fight. You need to beat your addictions. Well, listen tonight and learn how to fight the fight that really matters. You need to get through the trials of your entrepreneurial dreams. You need to climb the level in your corporation. You need to heal a relationship. You need to change your health habits. You need to take on political and social change that God has called you to. You need to raise your kids a different way than you were raised so they don't have to go through what you endured. How many of you want that in your life? We want blessings. So tonight, what are we doing? Tonight, we need this. And Jacob, he laid his head down at night and had great dreams of greatness, but he didn't know how to get there. All he knew was the worldly way of scratching and clawing his way to the top. And Jesus warned about this. Jesus said this to his disciples. The disciples were following Jesus. And the disciples said, who's first? Who's best? Who's going to be next to you, Jesus? And Jesus said this to them. He said, the kings and rulers of the earth lord power over each other. But among you, this should never be. I have a different way of leadership to teach you. And then what did Jesus do? He took a towel and he washed the feet of the disciples, the greatest leader has to be the greatest servant leader among us. Jacob didn't know this yet, but this fight night was about to teach him some stuff. If you have your Bible tonight, turn with me to Genesis 32 and 22, and we're about to just walk down our fight night. The Bible says this, that night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. Now, Jacob doesn't know it, but Jacob is giving us a pattern of how to have a great fight night with Almighty God and wrestle with God. And the first thing that he does is Jacob had taken inventory of all of his stuff. And he sent it across the river. All of his possessions were out of his hands. And God looked down to say, okay, now he's ready for the fight. This fight would not be about all those things. And I want to tell you this. There has to be a point in your life where you get rid of all your stuff. Turn to your neighbor and say, get rid of your stuff. John the Baptist, he really mastered this. Because John the Baptist, he spent his entire life training disciples, building a ministry. But then when it was time for Jesus to step forward in his ministry, John the Baptist, people that he had trained up, his dear friends, his disciples, his workers, he gave them to Jesus. He gave his ministry to Jesus willingly, willingly with great delight. And this is what John the Baptist said. He said, from now on, Jesus must increase and I must decrease. And I love the fact that there's a great paradox happening right now because what have I called you here for? I said, come here because you got some great blessings and some great promises, some things that you're going to get. But in order to get the things, the first point is that you got to get rid of everything in order to get what God has called you to have. 
You got to get rid of the things. It's not about the stuff in order to get the promises that God has promised you. Can't you hear Jesus saying it this way? Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break in and steal. So here's the first point tonight. You have to give up your stuff in order to be able to fight the right fight with Almighty God. Why? Because the fight's not about your stuff. What did he do? He sent his wives, he sent all of his possessions over the river, and he's by himself. And in the solitude place, in the fight, not with people, not with possessions, but the fight with God, that's where you have your breakthrough. So tonight, I want to tell you, you got to get rid of your stuff. It's not about the things, but it's all about God. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's about God. So the verse keeps going. And the verse says this, so Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Now for those of you that are new to this passage of scripture, this man is believed to either be an angel of God in human form or Jesus Christ manifested in the Old Testament. But the bottom line is this, it's not a man, it's not a thing, but he is wrestling with Almighty God. His fight was with God. His fight was for his destiny. And it was all about learning what? How to pray through. It was about holding on to heaven for dear life. It was about getting a jujitsu grip on the promises of God and not letting go. It was about enduring the darkness of the night because you know that God has a great victory in his plans. It was about wrestling and praying the way that God taught us how to pray. How did Jesus teach us to pray? Say it with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He was saying, I'm not, stop, I'm not gonna stop praying. I'm not gonna stop holding on. I'm not gonna stop believing. I'm not gonna quit until your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because that's how God teaches us to pray. And that's how we wrestle with God for the promises that he's promised us. I love the fact that Jesus said this. Jesus said, this is how you should pray and not give up. And for someone in this place, that's the only thing that you need to hear. You can't give up. Don't give up where you are right now. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your relationships. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on the community of God because people have wronged you. Let me tell you, there's people everywhere. This community is waiting to open our arms to you. We can't give up. Keep praying and don't give up. And if we do that, I'm telling you tonight, Jacob had a death grip on the angel of the Lord. And the verse keeps going. Uh, verse 25, it says this. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let go of me for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let go of you unless you bless me. Then the man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. And this is huge because this is step two. He said, what is your name? He made him fess up to who he was. What does Jacob mean? It means deceiver. Jacob means trickster, right? Jacob means I've lived a life of deception. And he's saying, bless me. But God's saying, I'm not going to bless you until you fess up of the, all the lives you've impacted and ruined in the wake of your life. You're going to fess up to who you are. It's time to repent. And the second place is repentance and saying, God, this is who I am. I want your blessing it's time to change me. And tonight is a night of repentance for all of us. If God said, you know what? What is your name? Well, some of us would answer in different ways. Some of us would say, yes, God, I'm a thief. And I've been a thief from the time I was born. Some of us would say, yes, God, I'm full of lust. I've never respected women the way they should be respected. I've res disrespected them with, my, with, with everything that I've done. I am a man of lust. 
Some of us would say, yes, God, I am greedy. I don't even want other people mentioning the tithe. I don't want them trying to get my money because I'm the one that's greedy. Some people say, yeah, God, I'm angry. I got more triggers than there are guns in this world. I get angry. I'm mad. I'm full of anger. Some people say, yes, God, I'm prideful and even lazy. I act like life owes me something. I'm owed this. I need this. The pride is so great. And what is that? Do you really want to know my name, God? Because this is what happens when you wrestle with God and you repent for the things that you've been through. This is who I am. But God, please change me. And this is what happened to Peter. When Peter had been up all night fishing, so Peter was up all night. He was in just turmoil financially. And he was trying to fish, and he just couldn't catch anything. How many fishermen we got out here? We got any fishermen? Guys, I'm, I'm the worst fisherman ever. If you want to make a real man out of me, take me fishing, right? I'm just, I'm terrible. But I have been noodling. Anyone been noodling in this place? I caught a catfish this big with my bare hands. I'm a real man, so in your face. There you go, right there. But he was out all night fishing. What was he doing? He was trying to catch some fish, but he caught nothing. What happened? Jesus appeared, and Jesus said, cast your net on the other side. In one moment, he had so many fish that he could barely bring the fish in. Jesus he gave him a new identity, and he fell at Jesus' face. What did he say to Jesus? Jesus, I'm not worthy. I can't even do this, God. I don't even know how I can be in your presence. And that's what happens really when we cry out to Almighty God. Now listen, if you've already had that moment with God, I'm not asking you to re-repent tonight. But there are always things still to learn from our struggles with God. And maybe he's just asking you, who you are in certain situations. Maybe he's asking you to come to terms with one little thing he's still wanting you to change in your life. What I'm saying is that God asked Jacob to admit who he had been for 40 plus years in his life. And once Jacob admitted it in the safety of God's presence, the next verse happened. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm ready for the blessing. Turn to your other neighbor and say, the blessing's on its way. I didn't mean to brag on myself for noodling a second ago, guys. I didn't want to make y'all feel bad about yourselves that you never caught a fish that big with your bare hands. So, so the verse goes like this, verse 28. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask me my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Everyone say, and yet my life was spared. What's the first thing Jacob does after he's renamed, after he gets the blessing, and after he sees that God has great things for him? He comes to God in gratitude. He surrenders to God and says, you know what? You could have taken my life at any time you wanted. I was in a fight with you. I know I didn't have a chance, but because you spared my life, I'm coming in gratitude. I'm renaming this place, and I'll never be the same. I want to tell you this. When God does give you the breakthrough, when he gives you the blessing, you better run to his altar and give him praise and glory in the first thing that you do because that's the only person that deserves the glory. You think it was you and your great ideas? You think it was you and your great talent? Who gave you those ideas? Who gave you the talent? Who gave you the opportunity? No, it's because you let me be in this place. I saw your face and you spared my life. The first thing after the blessing is gratitude and surrender. And then the verse goes on and it says this. And I love this so much. This is my favorite part. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel. And he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket. As we close tonight, and Alex, you can go ahead and come up here. And we finish up reading this passage. 
let's just look real quick at what happened after Jacob finished this fight. Okay, God changed his name. His name was no longer Jacob, which means what? Deceiver. But he changes his name to Israel. Israel means to fight for the blessings of God. Israel means to wrestle for the promises of God. And that would be the name that God gives his children. It comes from the renaming of Jacob, deceiver, to Israel. God is in the renaming business. And God wants to rename some of us tonight. What does that mean? That gives you a new identity. It gives you a new direction. It gives you a new love with Jesus Christ. But then go back to verse 31. I love this so much. It says, the sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, or the sun rose above him as he passed the face of God. When your fight is over and you've won, the sun is gonna rise on you. During your struggle, you're seeking God's face, you're seeking God's answers, and you're scrapping for God's blessings. But as you pass by the struggle, when you know that you know that you've had the blessing. How many of you love this verse? Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for the night, but what happens when that sun is setting and that sun is rising? Well, it's joy. And throughout the scriptures and really throughout literature, whenever the sun is rising, it's a universal example of a human being reaching their destiny, the destiny of Almighty God coming to pass. I just love the picture of this because Jacob stays behind, sends his family. He's alone, he fights with God, he doesn't let go until he's blessed. The first thing he does is he's grateful, but then as he passes on to the next, the sun rises and he has his blessing, he has his love, he has his grace going on to the next thing. And I want to tell you this, don't be down tonight. Don't be thinking that you're just fighting for no good reason because there is a victory crown waiting for you. There's something great waiting for you on the other side. There's life abundantly here on this earth, but God wants to give you the great victory of fighting the way God's called you to fight and fighting for the things God called you to fight for. So tonight I wanna end with the ultimate fight night, the greatest fight night, and you might be ahead of me right now, but when Jesus declared, it is finished, what he said is the fight was over. But baby, the story did not end at the fight because the crown of resurrection was awaiting the one that had won. And just like in the story with Jacob, it happened when the sun was coming up. The Bible said after the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look in the tomb. And Jesus was already out. And he was walking in the light of the new morning. His destiny was fulfilled. His fight had been worth it. He gained the victory. He had won the fight. And let me tell you this, the only reason that you can fight It's because he already finished it. The only reason that we can stand up and fight for his blessings is because of what Jesus did. It's not your ability. It's not your love. It's not your smarts. It's not even the way that you walk. But it's because of what Jesus did, the thing that he did. In fighting and completing it, he finished it. He rose on the third day. And whenever you're fighting, you don't say, God, make me strong. No, you say, God, fill me with your strength so I can get past this. God, show me what you want in my life so I can have your victory because God's victory is a lot better than the thing that you have cooked up in your mind. The best thing in your life is what Jesus has for you. No longer do we shrink back from the fight and say, God, take the fight away from me. But we say, God, give me resurrection power to be able to fight like I've never fought before. And when we fight with resurrection power, we always win. Turn to your neighbor and say, we always win. Tonight, I want you to accept a prophecy over your life. I want you to lift your hands, stand to your feet right now. And as I speak this, I want you to accept it into your spirit, down into your marrow, whatever you're facing.
facing, I believe that some of us are going to fight tonight and invite the resurrection power of Jesus to be able to win. Come on, accept this right now. You will be the husband and father that your wife and kids know you can be in the name of Jesus. You will be the man of integrity and honor that you know you want to be in the name of Jesus. You will find the power to make wealth, which God has promised to give all those that are called to his purposes in the name of Jesus. You will overcome your addictions. You will become the gentle giant instead of the angry oar. And you will have the victory crown after this fight is over. You will have victory in the name of Jesus, whatever you're facing. Tonight, I want to tell you this. My favorite part of the story is that after the fight was over, he crossed over and it was morning. But the Bible says this, he walked with a limp because of his moment. And guys, he spent the rest of his life speaking about his fight night because the limp the testimony, the evidence of Almighty God was the fact that he endured the night. He didn't give up. He held on, and he gave God all the praise and glory. Tonight, I want you to bow your heads. Tonight, maybe you need to come to a place of really getting rid of your stuff. You say, you know what? This world and this possessions, everything that I'm trying to get done, it means too much to me. You say, I want to surrender everything I do to Almighty God. Tonight, if you say, I want to surrender everything, just keep your heads bowed. Just raise your hand. If that's you tonight, you want to surrender. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Maybe tonight you say, Denny, you know, I don't even like to say my name because I don't want to admit, like Jacob, all the things I've been through. But you say, tonight, I want to confess who I've been because I want God to change my name. You want God to change the direction you're going in and it comes with confession if that's you raise your hand right now if you say i want god to change me give me a new direction thank you jesus if tonight you say you know what god has come through for me and i prayed so hard for god to come through for me and god did but here in this story i forgot to make an altar and to give god thanks in the way that I should have. If you say, I want to give God thanks and give God glory for all the good things that have happened in my life, just raise your hand right now that you want to do better in that. Thank you, Jesus. And tonight, if you say, Denny, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm ready to fight the right fight, stop fighting on my own, but I want to invite the resurrection power and strength the one that finished it all. You say, I want to accept Jesus as my personal savior. You say, I want to rededicate my life. You can't wait because you can't fight on your own. You can keep trying, but you're going to keep struggling. It's time for you to start winning. So tonight, if you want to give God your life, if you want to give Jesus your life, every head bowed, this is the most important moment in this place. If you want to give Jesus your life, I want you to raise your hand right now. You say, I want to give Jesus my life. I'm ready. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Every person in this place, I want you to repeat after me. Jesus, come into my life. I believe you died on the cross and you rose on the third day. Forgive me of my sins, Jesus. Give me a new direction. Give me a new calling. Give me a new purpose in following you. Help me to connect to a community of Christ. Help me to follow you. God, I pray for every person in this place, Lord. Jesus, I just thank you. I thank you that your word rings true. Thank you for this fight night that Jacob had. God, thank you for this pattern that we can have in, in following after you. And God, thank you that get, you gave your son to finish it all on that cross. But it didn't end until he rose on the third day. And today, God, we have access to your Holy Spirit. Lord, tonight, I pray that, that we grab hold of the blessings, not our blessings, but your blessings that you have for us because it's greater than anything that we could ever imagine. God, tonight, 
I pray that you bless my friends, that as we get into these fights in just a moment, we enjoy each other, we have some fun, but we don't forget that we're here to exalt Jesus. We're here to exalt you. Bless my friends, give them breakthrough, give them love, give them grace, give them comfort. And God, I pray for the family units in this place. Strengthen the family units. I pray for the men of this church as they're the heads of their households, that they will be the leaders you have called them to be, that they will get up and they will go to church. They will get up and do the things that you've called them to do. They will get up and pray for their family. They will fight for what you've called us to fight for and the way that you've called us to fight. Tonight, we surrender to you and we thank you for this night. In the name of Jesus, and everybody said, amen. Come on, give God some praise tonight if you love him.